Before the video starts, just to make sure you're not confused, I thought I would just point out the fact that these panels here are part of a mod, so is this drill image, also this menu up here is, and this FOV bit down here is also part of a mod. So they're not part of the update, they are just from a mod. Update 1.1 is now in beta, and let's be honest, you ain't gonna read all those patch notes, so let me do it for you. First of all, I'm going to show you one of the most important new parts added, the propeller. Propellers come with their own category called aeronautics. Jet engines have also been moved to this new category. As you can see, just like the rocket engines, there's lots of presets to choose from with a propeller. And obviously, we are not just bound to these presets, there are lots of different procedural customization options. First of all, we have blade count. The minimum blades you can have is obviously two, and the maximum you can have is eight. The next is obviously the propeller's size. The maximum size is 12 meters and the minimum size is 1.5 meters. Of course, you can change this with Tinker Panel. Next is blade width. This changes how thick the blades are. Next is hub scale. This changes how big the part in the middle that the propellers are connected to is. The next setting is blade control. You can change this from fixed to manual. Fixed means that the propeller's pitch will stay at the exact same angle for the entire time. Whereas changing it to manual will give you a new input and you can use this input to change the propeller's pitch in mid-flight. Underneath this, you can see where you can change the pitch of the propeller if it's either in fixed or you can change how much it will move in manual mode. And of course, what's a new part without having different part styles? We have tons of different propeller styles and also different hub styles, which gives us much customization options. Also something to know is that each different blade style actually changes the weight and the cost of the propeller, which is awesome. And there's also plenty of different ways you can paint this. I love the fact that there's a little painting bit between the edge of the propeller and the inner parts. You can add, for example, a glow part like they have on the V-22 Osprey. Propellers also work underwater, and there's some specific styles that are meant to look like ship propellers. This means you can make boats that have actually decent looking propellers without adding a hundred frickin' fins. And whilst I'm on the topic of propellers, I'd like to point out that electric motors have had a slight overhaul. In the patch notes, it says that the physics of it have been changed and legacy motors will also act the same way. You can also see that the torque, brake torque and static resistance all have the newtons now behind the number. And there's also a new toggleable called Throttle Governor. Its tooltip says, if enabled, the motor's throttle input will act as an RPM selector and the throttle will be adjusted to maintain the desired RPM. Overall, I think the propeller is one of the best parts we've ever had added. It has a really nice animation and it also has some really nice sounds with it as well. Something else I noticed is that the sounds are dynamic, so that means that you're not just going to be hearing the exact same propeller every time you use a different one. And speaking of sounds, that sounds like a good time to make a transition to some sound related changes. Yep, you heard that right, landing gear and wheels now have new sounds. The electric motor's sounds change depending on the speed it's spinning at, and the wheels rolling sound changes depending on what type of terrain it's going on, for example concrete or rough terrain. You might think this is one of the simplest features added, but in my opinion this is actually one of the coolest features added because it just adds more variety to the sounds we can hear and I always love that. On the topic of minor changes, I'm just going to quickly go over another minor change. And that is the fact that in the launch craft menu, you can now see that all the challenges have been put into their own folder and same with the tutorials, which means it's much less cluttered, which means if there's more tabs added in the future, you'll easily be able to see them. Once again, this is just a tiny change, but I love it because it's just convenient. Next up, we're moving to one of the biggest drops of the 21st century. We got Druid limb manipulation, baby. Finally, we have more ways to torture them. Anyway, how it works is quite simple. You have to put a druid in a chair, and then you can see when you click on the chair that there's a new menu. In this menu, you want to click on the limb that you want to connect to the part. Then, you select the part you want the limb to be attached to. As you can see with a feature like this, the meme potential is absolutely unlimited. 
and you can do things for example like attaching the hands to a steering wheel you've made that moves or a flight stick or a lever or anything pretty much. If you remember seeing this video that I leaked, how I did it was I pretty much just put pistons on the hands and there he goes, he's doing push-ups. So this is probably one of the most creative features we've ever gotten. It has so much potential for literally everything. So it's going to be awesome to see what everybody does with this. The next change is extremely simple. It basically just allows you to put manual input on RCS from the RCS's main menu instead of XML. So if you go onto the RCS, you just click manual input and now you can just put your input in. All this does is changes the RCS to work on whatever input you've put it in. For example, I've put all the RCS on this craft to only work when I hit pitch and there you go. Bear in mind this won't work with old RCS because the panel won't show up. And in that case, you would just have to go back to doing it through Tinker Panel. But if you do it with new RCS from the new update, it should work fine. It's nothing huge, it's something that was already in the game, it's just easier to access now. Next up is a feature that's very useful for a person like me, and that is the Cheats menu. You can find the Cheats menu in the Flight Info panel, and it's at the very bottom. In this menu we have lots of cool things, for example we can give ourselves infinite fuel, we can turn our damage to zero so we don't die from smashing into planets, we can turn our heat damage off so we won't take any heat damage, we can turn our drag scale off or higher which will obviously make the atmosphere of planets work in different ways, and we can also tweak the gravity scale of the body we're orbiting which will obviously either make us heavier or make us completely light. Another button in this panel is the teleport button. When clicking this button, it will allow you to teleport upwards the amount of meters you put in, or if you have a craft or a planet selected, you can actually teleport to it. For example, here I have Sergia targeted, and if I teleport, it will ask us the latitude, longitude, and altitude, and then we can teleport there. The final feature in the cheats panel is called set speed. When you click this, it will add speed relative to the direction you're going, so if you're driving forward, it will add speed to that. Overall, the cheats panel is a massive W for me especially because it will allow me to go around planets and get content much faster than I usually would be able to. Now let's talk about the other new part, and that is the ball. The ball is extremely similar to the block, it has almost the exact same amount of attachment points. It cannot hold fuel just like the block can't. And with the ball comes a new feature which is also coming to the block too, and that is the fact you can resize the block without using the tinker panel now. This is once again one of those features that's going to be really nice because it means we can have round tanks and they don't have stupid attach points because they're not just two nose cones put together. Something I actually love to use the ball for is to attach the druid limbs to because it has a lot of attach points meaning you can put pistons and everything to have the parts moving and it's also just a really nice shape to put the limbs on. And obviously you want to make it transparent, make sure there's no collision, make sure there's no shadows and then there you go, you've got some really nice movement for your limbs. The next feature that's been added is something called Intracraft Docking. This allows you to dock multiple docking ports from the exact same craft together. As you can see, this craft is docked together, and if you can now see, I will disconnect one of the docking ports, and then it will reconnect itself. Originally, this didn't work, and now it does work, which is pretty awesome. You can make some awesome contraptions with this and other cool things. The final feature I'm going to talk about today is a new version of Career Mode. It's called Hybrid Mode, and it merges both Career Mode and Sandbox together. As you can see, when we create a Hybrid Mode world, we will have infinite tech points, basically infinite money, and we also have access to the Cheats menu once we're in Flight Mode. And of course, we also have every launch location unlocked as well. Hybrid Mode is made for people who don't want to have to struggle with the money and tech point side and just want to play the Career Mode tasks and i think it's really cool actually anyway that's all i've got for this video i intend on making a second video very soon with all the other extra features i haven't talked about in this one some of the extra changes i'm going to talk about in the next video will be some changes to the map view and the maneuver nodes also have some other new changes 
And if you want to read the blog post and the release notes for the 1.1 beta, they will both have links in the bottom of the description. So as always, thanks for watching and I'll see you in the next one.